So you want to just like rotate around here a little bit so they're not looking off the camera? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah is that cool? Yeah. Ah, yeah right. awesome. That only makes too much of a difference. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Brandon, we'll start with Steve, who's with you in the room. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, Brent, thanks. Um, what, coming off the game uh, the other day, what has been the focus and the mentality this week in getting uh, back on track? Um, I would say not to get too over caught up in, in the result of that game, yeah. just because um, after looking at the statistics, expected goals, the way we played, mm -hmm. it didn't uh, it didn't show in our performance what the outcome of the game was. So. Um, not getting too carried away with that, but also again, the set pieces, the the turning off in certain moments. I'm sure Chad has touched on that, and um, yeah, just individual mistakes, and um, mostly getting back to a base of what's the most important when you start a game is you have two teams with zero, um, trying to keep a zero, right? So um, I think we've been very much in an offensive standpoint in the last few months trying to produce a lot of goals but getting away from our um, our morals as a team which is uh, we want to be good defensively first and foremost so yeah. we're working a lot on that trying to um, getting back to the to the, the fundamentals of, of the game um, and that's that's going to help us you know in the next few months especially with all the games and, and how many um, road games especially because yeah. everybody knows how difficult it is to play on the road and um, you, you can see how quickly a game can get away from you if you if you let you know a few goals slip away. So um, just giving ourselves more of a chance in that in that sense. But then, yeah, looking at Houston um, again, I'm sure Chad has talked about it. The, the extreme pace that they have, it's the fastest team we'll play against so far. The front three um, this year. So understanding yeah. how to defend those spaces, but also how to exploit because there will be openings and. Um, Taking advantage of a, a West Coast team coming to play in DC, it's going to be a rainy night, and you know maybe we can you know use that to our advantage. We will use that to our advantage to to make sure that yeah the points stay with us because we have to get the points against those West Coast teams when they when they come to us. No, no question. Now, as a defender, how do you see the goalkeeping situation now? Because it, it looks like Bill's ready to come back. John's played the last few games, and now you got a new guy coming in as well who at some point is going to get some minutes presumably. Um, for sure. How does that, how's that work with the defenders and, and, and the different communication styles and, and playing styles? I think all of us know John and um, Bill well enough to, to be able to make the, the changes. I know Rafa from playing against him in, in Belgium, so, yeah. but I have never played with him. So, yeah, it, it's, it's not really for me to answer, to be honest, because I have to worry about my own self. And, and with the defense, we have our own kind of crew, and the keepers are their own. Uh, commodity that's off to the side, but um, yeah, whoever whoever comes in and plays knows that they have a big job and they have to, to do the job. So, um, I mean, I think as as defenders, we have full confidence in whoever's back there. We try to always portray that uh, whoever's playing in, in the goal, but also whoever's playing in front of us and who's next to us. It's it's kind of the unwritten rule of a defender to be the the guy who's always um, trying to persuade and push guys around you. And that's part of the job, no? So. Um, but yeah, again, whoever is in, is in the goal, I don't, I don't know anything about that situation. Needs to be ready, and just like I need to be ready, and just like the rest of us, because um, yeah, it's it's a massively important game for us. Um, we 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 need to get going again for sure. Yeah, got it. All right, thanks, Zach. No problem. We'll go to Dave Johnson. Dave. Hey, Brandon, how are we doing? Hey, Dave. Good to see you. The. Uh you were just talking about getting back to the fundamentals of, of you know, both teams started at, at zero. Um, are we going through a bit of a transition in terms of style of, of play? You, you still want the high press, but you have to balance it with the defense, or, or how would you describe what, what's going on now as, as, as you try to focus on the fundamentals? It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a transition. I think it's more just sharpening up things that we've gotten away from um, that we've kind of let slip out of our radar. I think every coach that is a professional um, at this level and the highest level will say that defending is the most important aspect of the game um, just because that keeps you alive in games. And, and we, we had a quote earlier that we spoke about that basically said that if, if you don't let teams 
score you can never lose so I'm not saying we're gonna go for for ties all the time but it, it gives you a better chance you know to be able to go on and win games so in terms of the pressing no we, we still want to keep that especially at Audi that's a huge um, trait of, of DC United to be a, a team that just absolutely squeezes the life out of other teams and, and that's what we're gonna do with Houston and uh, that's what we plan to do with all the teams that come to Audi this year um, on the road it can be sometimes a little bit different but I wouldn't say it's too much of a transition. I'd say it's just more sharpening the tools that we've kind of let, yeah, get a little bit of rust on them over the last few weeks and uh, while we're trying to work on other things. But yeah, the fundamentals are everything in this game and, and defending and, and keeping a zero and being you know, better on set pieces. How many games we've lost on set pieces and how many goals we've let in this year is just, it's unacceptable. I mean, I think we lead the league in most goals against in set pieces. You, you can't get to the playoffs with that, with that number. So getting back to that and and then letting the rest of itself take care of, you know, letting the, the, the offensive self piece take care of itself because we have enough tools in our shed to, to get goals. But, you know, we have to do a better job as a, as a team, especially we have to look at the defenders, but we have to look at everyone to say, you know, we have to do better with, with keeping zeros. I mean, it means a lot in this league to keep a zero. MLS is notoriously known for being a high scoring league. So, you know, to keep zeros as many times as possible will, will help us, you know, so much in, in the long run. We'll go back to Dave. Having said that, you mentioned set pieces, and, and obviously you're talking about Chad Summit cleaning up on, on on set pieces. What what are some of the the elements of that? Is it uh, you know communication? Is it is it is it focus? We always talk about the moment where you kind of switch off and allow a goal. But what what are some of the things you do work on that you could share? Yeah, you work on first and foremost winning your personal battle that you have to play against. I mean, there's there's a lot of different scenarios, but let's say most of the time on corner kicks and free kicks, you have you have a, a personal battle you have to deal with. You know, whoever your your guy is, and it's it's winning that it's winning that battle. You win that battle, and you don't allow a guy to to get a free header or a free chance on goal. And um, but absolutely, the mentality of of not switching off is is massive. You know, even the second goal against Columbus, we switch off, the ball goes in behind, and they and they go in and score. I wouldn't you know characterize that as a, a dead ball set piece, but it's the pass after a set piece, and it leads to a goal. So too much turning off, too much you know giving giving teams. I don't want to I don't want to be disrespectful and say easy goals, but it, it is. I mean, we're not getting beat in the run of play. We're not getting break you know broken down and, and scored on. We're, we're letting teams on dead ball situations, end of the game, you know, where it should be no problem. We have 11 guys back to defend and, and we should take care of it, you know, every time where we do, we let little holes and little gaps in. And, um, it's extremely, extremely frustrating on our end. And I can, I can tell you, we are working on it over and over and over again to hopefully, you know, eliminate that totally. Um, I think there will be still some times throughout the season, you give up little things and uh, you, you can't say you will never have a set piece goal again, but it's way, way too much now at this point. So um, we've put a massive emphasis on it. We've said that a couple games now, and I know people are, are really kind of tired of hearing that, but I can ensure that it is getting much better, even if it's not showing directly. Um, we're putting so much time and effort onto the video and the, the field and, and the mental aspect of it. So um, I'm encouraged by what's coming, um, but now we need to put it into play, right? Words are very easy and I can sit here and say, oh, we're doing all this and that. And then we give up a set piece in the game and everyone's like, well, it doesn't matter. So um, we know we have a little bit of a, a weight on our back to start producing that in a, in a better way, both offensively and defensively, but especially defensively to, to be much cleaner and, and much better. Hey, go ahead. And just one more question about uh, some of the young players on this team, whether it's Jackson Hopkins or Jeff Hall, the, the, the rookie, or you go right down the list. Uh, how much of is it energy do they provide to the team, or how much is, a, is it a, a, a kick for you to be playing with these guys that are so young and, and hungry and, and, by the way, talented too? Like you said, talented. I mean, <laughs> you look at the, the league 10 years ago, it wasn't players like this very often that were coming in at this age that were, that were so good at such a young age. So... It keeps uh, the older guys on their toes because they're coming fast. You know, they're coming faster and faster. But no, they bring a, a ton of excitement. They, they bring a lot of energy every day. They need to learn about managing games and, and understanding, you know, that this is, this is not really for fun anymore. It's, it's a job and this is a business and, and there, is, there is that side of it. But at the same time, no, I think we have a very, very good group of young guys. And you'll see a lot of these guys playing at a, 
at a high level for a long time um, as long as they keep their mentality straight and, and obviously knock on wood no injuries for any of them but it's a, it's a very good group and, and I hope that we as older guys can, can help them to develop as much as possible because it's the future for, for this club and, and for US soccer so um, it's, it's the delight, delight every day for, for me to be able to play with, with these younger guys um, but also I can just say in general it's, it's a delight to be with this group we have a very good group in general so um, yeah I'm a happy individual with, with who we have here right now that's it, Brennan. Thanks so much, man. Thanks, guys.